Hello, this is Angela Anderson. Thanks for joining me today. We are going to be painting a really fun project. Uh, it is mushrooms. This is for a hashtag Love Summer Art uh, 2017 um, collaboration. I've got uh, my friend Cinnamon Cooney and Ginger Cook with me again today uh, doing back-to-back -back live streams. So um, I hope you've enjoyed Cinnamon's show. She came on just before me and after me will be Ginger Cook live. So I hope you check that out after the show. And let's get started with our project. Okay, so we're gonna do this really fun like fairy garden mushroom uh, thing. I um, really had fun with this. Uh, definitely more whimsical. I think it'll be a fun kids project. I'm going to show you how to simplify it um, so that if you're doing this with kids, um, you you know, you don't have to put in all this shading and that kind of thing. You can make it a lot more simplified and a lot easier for a beginner uh, painter, first time painter. So um, I've got a bunch of colors that I'm going to be using. You can really use whatever colors that you'd like, though. So don't feel like if you don't have these colors that you can't do this project. You can uh, adapt them to whatever colors you want. Just, you know, a blue sky, some fun colors for your mushroom some green for your grass and you're good to go a um, little bit of white for the butterflies and things um, so I've got uh, cadmium yellow light cadmium yellow medium pyrrol orange pyrrol red quinacridone magenta uh, doxazine purple uh, ultramarine blue phthalo blue green shade teal uh, that's just a premixed color that's got phthalo blue and uh, phthalo green with some white together uh, this is unbleached titanium uh, burnt sienna burnt umber and that's phthalo green again and then the titanium white so um, pretty simple palette just kind of all kinds of rainbow colors and you could use craft paints for this too I'm going to use this on a canvas uh, gesso board but uh, if you have a canvas or even wood or um, whatever you want to use as your support structure you might uh, put some gesso down if you're using wood just to seal it, but um, this can be done in anything pretty much. So I'm going to start out with some ultramarine blue. I've got my husband Mark with me today too. Sorry, meant, forgot to mention that. I'm just getting so excited about painting. Hey there, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> He's Don't the mind man, me just sitting over here in the corner. Man in the corner there. We're doing this live, so... Uh, if you've got any questions for me, you can uh, post those in all caps during the live show, and Mark will let me know. Hopefully, if he's paying attention, he's and if he's I'm got not a being other things he's got going and, on over there. Yeah, and if I'm not being repressed. <laughs> Are you being repressed today, honey? Sorry. Well, I didn't get the repression speech, so I think I'm okay right now. <laughs> yeah, you didn't get the <laughs> stop talking to me because I'm trying to. Concentrate. I'm trying to think and paint. <laughs> This one won't be that hard. This is going to be an easy, fun, relaxed painting, hopefully. If, you're, uh, if you've never painted before, I think that this one um, is probably, I, I would say, it's not too difficult. It's going to take a little bit of brush control. So if you've drawn before, or, you know, have pretty good hand-eye coordination, I think you probably pull this one off. It's, it's got very simple shapes. A um, few lines. I think the grass is probably going to be the hardest part, honestly. The grass, maybe the butterflies or the dragonflies. I'm adding this blue, uh, ultramarine blue. I added just a tiny bit of white just to make it a little bit more opaque. And I'm just adding it all the way around down to the bottom corners here. And going really quickly. Just kind of slap it on here. You don't have to worry about every brush stroke being smooth. And I'm going to start grabbing some phthalo green or phthalo blue I mean and a little bit of white and I'm going to come in on the inside here and put some of that in and I'm just going to kind of try to blend that out so make sure that you um, make sure that you are um, working quickly so that this ultramarine blue doesn't dry now you could do the whole thing in the solid color if I was doing this with kids I would probably just have them do the whole thing in a solid color that would be a, a lot easier for them um, or you could, um, what I've also done in the past with my kids' classes is I've gone around on the canvases and I've squirted a little bit ultramarine blue in the corners and then a little bit of the phthalo blue where I want it to go and like a little bit of white in the middle and told them to start with the white and blend out. Um, and that works really well too. So it kind of, they, they don't have to dip into the paint 
onto the canvas or onto the palette and it's a little bit easier and a lot of times I'll, I'll do that with my um, adult classes too just have them start saves saves a mess on the on the palette because sometimes this part is the messiest part it makes a big mess on your uh, palette so try to keep it kind of contained and I'm just doing a little bit lighter in the center part to give it kind of a glow we'll put all kinds of little fireflies and things up in the sky here so it'll be I think this would be would you want one of these for Father's Day honey I don't know it's kind of it's kind of a neutral gender maybe ish you probably wouldn't put this in your office but you might put it on the refrigerator if you put some tanks and stuff in there <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> fighter jets fighter jets and tanks okay sorry i'll i have to do that one of these days i'm gonna have to do an army themed one just for my son who's in the army and my husband who plays tanks Add a little bit more of both of these blues here because I'm running out. Oh, okay, that doesn't want to go back on. There we go. I'm using the golden heavy body acrylics, but um, like I said at the beginning, you, you really could use craft acrylics or student body acrylics. That'd be fine, too. Um, the craft acrylics will probably take more than one coat, and that's normal. So if you're, you know, if you're trying to do this with the thinner um, acrylics that come in the little bottles... Just know that you might need a couple coats to get the coverage, you know, get your white covered. And that is completely normal. You're not doing anything wrong. All right. That looks pretty good. I might have you go ahead and dry that real quick, like super quick if you think you can. Um, oh, I have plenty of experience in super drying quick. paintings. It's I like to watch paint dry. <laughs> Okay, I need to stop messing with this because it's going to start picking up the color underneath. Okay, I'm going to give that to you. So when you get to this point and this is starting to dry, I don't want to touch it because what it'll do is lift off the... Um, stop. Go. Get, thank you. Stop it. I'm helping. <laughs> Acrylics start to get sticky when they um, start to dry. And so if you start to try to blend over them or mess with them when they're in that drying stage where they're kind of in between wet and getting, getting a little tacky, they'll just stick right to your brush and lift right off your canvas. And I've had that happen a lot. So you, uh, you just let them dry completely, get a little hairdryer and set it by your workstation so you can quickly blow dry it. Don't get it too hot. Don't get it too close to your acrylics because it can kind of mess with the um, drying and bubble and I don't know, do weird things. But... Um, just kind of leave it about, I don't know, 8 to 10 inches away from your um, canvas and do a side-to-side -side motion with it. And then you can even hit it with a little bit of cool air um, so that it's not super hot um, when you come back to paint with it. So I don't think Mark knows that trick yet, though. I think there's probably a setting on that dryer that does that. But I already got paint on my hand. I don't even know how. I must have done that on the side when I picked it up. Keep yourself some handy wipes. If you're like me, you're going to need them. And I painted my nails red today to match our little mushroom. So, Simo was mentioned and her hair matched her painting, which I thought was awesome. It was like, it, at one point she was standing in front of her painting and you couldn't hardly tell where her hair started and the painting ended. It was like the same exact shade of magenta purple. It was awesome. So... I did not do dots on mine, though. I wish I could. I, I do good not to get it on my cuticles when I'm trying to paint with my left hand. So this is about as good as it gets. And I did kind of mess it up a little bit. Mark had to help me. He's my, he's my hairdryer and my emergency nail tech. <laughs> <laughs> All right. okay. I never thought I'd be doing that. I know. Oh, I no. know. You're a multi-talented guy. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't tell your people at work that work for you. Right? Yeah, I hope they're not watching this. <laughs> Lose all credibility <laughs> in the office. Okay, so I just dampened this with a little bit of water, squeezed it all out. This is just a foam pouncer. If you don't have these, you can pick them up. They're very, very cheap. I've got a link down in the description to all the materials and brushes that I'm using today. 
Um, but if you don't have one of these, you could just use a scruffy brush or something like that, or even your finger probably would work um, to do this technique. So don't feel like if you don't have the tool, you can't do this project. But uh, these are really usually pretty cheap, like 2 or $3 for a pack. Um, okay, so I'm going to grab some teal. And I'm going to work it into this color that was kind of my light color. Um, and there again, if, if you don't have teal, um, any kind of aqua blue would work. Or just mix together your thalo blue and thalo green in the equal parts and add some white to it and you'll get this color. So I'm going to add just a little bit of paint and then I'm going to have a paper towel. need an extra here. That. So, so what color red are your nails? Oh, I don't know. You're going to have to look it up. It's some sort of weird color. It's in the bag, it's in the over, bag there. over there. Yeah, I didn't okay. remember to set it out. Okay. Um, it's a little bit shiny. It had like a, it had like a, like a little bit of crystallized stuff in there. So I'm going to use this to do our little fireflies. I'm just going to set it down and do a bunch of little dots. And actually, before I do this, I want to sketch out my mushrooms so I kind of know where they're going to go because I found that in my um, example painting I covered over a lot of them which is fine I mean I do want a few peeking out but there were a few that were kind of distracting so I'm just going to oh there we go it's yeah, rush. roulette rush yeah it has like a little purplish sheen to it too it's really pretty okay so for my mushrooms I wanted um them to be staggered. So I wanted one really tall, one kind of medium, and one really little bitty. And then I left room for these three um, ones here. Mark, go ahead and pop up the picture there for me. He's doing all kinds of stuff. He's like... How's that? Yeah. Can I'm you see it? seeing it on my screen. You need transition. Oh. So you can see it? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I could see it just fine. You could see it. But nobody else could. All right. Okay, I'll do my nails over here. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm not going to do my nails? Oh, it's sorry. It's Father's Day. We're going to go out later. I mean, you could. I don't care. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't bother me. All right. I'm going to use my chalk here and draw out my thing. So I want to make sure that I have room for my little curly Q fern. So I'm going to do kind of an S curve really close to the edge here. Just do kind of an elongated S and we get a little bit closer to the edge. So I have plenty of room for my mushrooms. Using chalk just allows you to kind of make little editing choices while you're doing your drawing. Just regular school chalk. And so there's my first big mushroom. It's going to set right about the halfway mark. And right about, I would say, just on the inside, of maybe at the quarter mark here. So if you split your canvas into half and then put him right on this quarter spot here. And kind of taper out the edge so that it's a little bit wider at the base. So you have room for your little door to go in. And then right about halfway, there's like a little break where it kind of comes out. And then I... I decided I think the only one that I'm going to do the underside of it is this one up here. I think these two I'm just going to do them a little bit easier. You can see how if you wanted to adapt these for kids and make it super easy, you can just do them the way I'm going to do these two. You don't have to do the undersides. That's probably the most difficult part of it. So here's this little guy. Cute. You want to put a snail right here. He'll go like there. It's just a little circle with the curly Q inside of it, and then it's tapered off the back, and then like a little rounded head right here. Angle back. And we'll do these three little kind of tall, spiky mushrooms. And one big one right 
here that kind of curves up like that. And then you'll just do an oval to show the underside of it, like a really flat little oval shape. And curve out those edges. Then the inside of the the house part or the stem part is going to come up right over the top so you just erase that little bit right there. Cute. And then this one's also got a little ruffle right here. And then our long curly fern curves both ways here. There and there. Alright, I think we're good. That if you really wanted to get fancy, you could add a couple more for, uh, mushrooms. I was thinking maybe one like one of these kind that does this little top hat thing. Looks like a little elf hat or something. Would be cute too. So I might add one right over here. A little bit on top of my fern there. And then the rest of this will be kind of filled in with flowers and grasses. You can do a few little big daisies here. That kind of thing. So now we know where um, this is all going to go. And I can kind of set... Uh, yeah, I don't. My dragonflies are going to go in here too, so we can go ahead and kind of do their wings so we know where to. Those are going to go. Then we can kind of do circles for where we want our dragon. Our. Uh, what are these fireflies? Thank you. Sorry, I can't use my words today. The longer that I paint today, the less I'll be able to use my words. So <laughs> this just happens. It's normal. I think it's a right brain, left brain thing. <laughs> okay, so there we go. I'm just going to fill in that whole area with these circles. Now we're, now we're going to truck along here. I'm going to grab a little bit of white, too, because I want a little bit lighter color and grab a little bit of that phthalo blue so that it's... Kind of subtle at first. I don't want to go too bright right at first. And we'll add more layers and get brighter as we go. So I'm just setting it down and twisting a little bit to get that spiral, spirally look. And you see I did all of these with just one little pounce uh, on here. You don't need a lot of paint. If you have too much paint, it won't, it won't have this soft uh, effect that you want. So... Okay, I think that looks good. Now I'm gonna switch to a smaller one. Let me see, I think I wanna get this size. This size right here. So what are these Q-tip looking things called? These are called pouncers or dabbers. Pouncers or dabbers. Yeah, so if you search, there's the link down in the description to the Martha Stewart set and they had all kinds of different sizes um, that I found on, you, on, uh, on uh, Amazon, so. All right, so then now I'm going to grab some white and a little bit of my cadmium yellow light. And I'm going to blend that out. I might grab a little bit of the teal too, just so that it's got a soft, soft green glow. The cadmium yellow light has just got a little bit more of the green in it um, than the cadmium yellow medium. So that's why I used it for this. Ooh, that's looking really pretty. I'm just going to go in the centers of all of these. Now, if you don't have these, again, I um, here, I'll show you how to do this with, you can do this with a Q-tip, too, or even with your finger. So I'll do one with, I'll do one down here. So I can start out with my finger and do a little circle or with my Q-tip. Where's my Q-tip? Wet it down just a little bit. Grab a little bit of that white and yellow color and just run it in a circle. See how that worked just as well. So, all right, I'm liking these. These look really cute. I think I'm just going to leave those for now and let them dry. We'll start on our mushroom. I'm going to grab my um, angle brush here, a 3 8 inch angle. Some of this pyro red and cadmium red would work just as fine. Uh, really, any bright red um, is just fine. Okay, we got a question. Yes. Somebody's asked. Add a um, tiny bit of white to this so it would be more opaque. Go ahead. They've got a craft red paint. Yes. Is there any way to add something to it to get it close to a cad red? 
Um, what shade of craft red? I mean, I, it, if it's a bright kind of orangey red, it, it'll work just fine for this. Uh, the mushrooms that in real life, these, these red mushrooms have a little tiny bit of orange in them. Some of them do. So that's why I'm using the pie roll because it's a little bit more of an orange shade. But um, to get an orange or red, you just add a little bit of yellow or something like that to it. Or orange. Um, if you've got a real purple, like a burgundy red, though, um, the yellow might the yellow might uh, turn it a little bit brownish, so it might not be as vivid, but um, you can test it. need you to turn that fan off because I think it's drying out my paint a little bit quicker. Got a fan running in the background, isn't it? Here we go. Okay, it's better. So if water stops, I spray starts. my canvas uh, or my palette with a little bit of water as I work so that it stays moist. I was just saying if water drops on your painting, it's probably just sweat coming off of you then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no joke. Here, I'll just pull up my sleeves here. I didn't wear my um, my apron today, just just for that reason. Because I was, I've been Mark's been turning off the AC so that it doesn't make noises during the show, and I've been dying. Yeah, we got this <clears throat> new shotgun mic kind of thing, and it picks up all the noise. Yeah, it's a lot more sensitive. Yep. Which is not a bad thing, since I talk so softly most of the, when I get into my zen. Get about 45 minutes into a painting, and I usually get a little bit softer in my voice. Get very blissed out in the moment. Relaxed. And my voice gets real breathy and soft. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm whispering to myself. I try not to do it. I do it every time, though. It's like, Mark has ruined me, so it's fine. I, I got another comment this week. I wish I, I wish you talk louder. It sounds like you're mumbling, talking to yourself, and I'm like, that's because I am mumbling, talking to myself. It's <laughs> pretty much it. <laughs> really bad habit. <laughs> but I appreciate those of you who love me anyway. So <laughs> stick with me. Bear with my mumbling. <laughs> So you can see how much easier these ones would be, you know, without having to do the underside here. Um, for kids, totally doable. Give them a little paintbrush and let them fill it in. Uh, I think that they would do a great job. And little spider cinnamon's son did a video um, with the red mushroom. Um, so. That was my inspiration. He he was asking if, if I was inspired by his painting. And I was like, yes, I was. I thought you did such an awesome job. I had to do a red, a red mushroom for myself. <laughs> his was really cute. She said he was actually, it was put on access, uh, public access on, in that their area in Texas. So I was like, Ooh. wow, he's a star. <laughs> Pretty cool. Okay, so not too bad. I'm gonna grab a little bit smaller brush and we'll do some of the grasses. We'll do that first and then that way we can put our stems on top and it won't um, interfere. I think I want to use, I'll try it with this brush. This is my um, number two flat. I like the long bristled brushes for grass. Um, I could also use, well, actually let me try it with my angle brush and see how it works because the angle brush usually works pretty well with grasses too. So before we introduce a new brush, we can try it with this one first. Just clean it out really well. That red wants to get trapped in there. And you don't want the red and green to mix because it'll make a brown. 
And we don't want brown grass, and not this time. This is summer. Got lots of green grass going. Mark's had to mow this morning, actually. <laughs> Mowing part like two. Cursing the grass right now. <laughs> I yeah, I ran out of daylight Wednesday night <sighs> while somebody was out partying with their friends. I know, I know. I was here trying to keep the house in shape. <laughs> You're so fused. I know. He won't let me get near the mower, so don't even start. I've offered they, to mow the they, lawn. They, they didn't need to know that. <laughs> I can't get the sympathy That vote. is his. It's like the hairdryer. It's his pro, pro, proprietary, Terry. <laughs> He's like the lawn care and the blow drying are <laughs> Mark's domain. Don't encroach. Okay, and, I'm mixing, <laughs> mixing you've, a dark. You try to group in the uh, vacuum cleaner with that too that, somehow. Yes, the so vacuum th works yeah, that same way. But that's your doing. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll let you use the vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> let me. Okay. Well, I thought since you just got a brand new, really spiffy one that you might. No? Okay. <sighs> All right. All right. Oh, yeah, that's working good. All right, okay, back so to I painting. mixed up a green here. Be quiet. I'm trying to tell him what I'm doing. <laughs> See, he gets being repressed. Thalo blue and thalo green with a little bit of white right here. Okay, go. Help, go. Help. <laughs> I'm being repressed. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right, so I'm pressing. If you press it flat, you can get a nice blade on your brush here. And I'm just going to pull from the bottom up and get some of those grasses happening at the bottom of the canvas. And I'm just going to go right over the top of where I'm putting this snail because I don't. I want some grasses behind him. So we'll draw him back in later. Just wanted to leave enough room for him in my sketch so I knew where he was going to go. And then we'll put some in here by these mushrooms. Kind of by these ones, I'm just going to do a little bit shorter grasses. And I'm leaving plenty of room in between because I want to put other colors of grass. So I don't want to crowd it out too much right here at first and leave no room for other colors to go. So just like this yeah just flicking it I'm not pulling um, doing this really quick flicking motion to get you really more natural looking grasses than if you tried to kind of carefully draw them out and get them perfectly straight just flick it get a lot more natural looking stuff okay let's grab some of the cadmium Yellow light here and a little bit of white. Add a little bit of water to my brush because it's starting to dry out. Be careful what you say. Why? The Sherpa's been lurking in the background. Hey, Cinnamon. Her chat was pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to see the very end because I was starting, I was putting out my paints and stuff, but it was looking really great. I think that was a genius idea for Father's Day. I wish I thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're gonna add some yellow greens. We did do the tractor a few weeks ago. That was kind of our pre-Father's Day, where this is more of our summer, summery kids. We're gonna to try to do some more kids kind of projects this summer. So this will be the kind of the first one out of that, out of that group that we're trying to hit, give you some things that you can do with your kids while they're out of school. Some sort of easier art projects, kind of more whimsical style. We'll still be doing our more, you know, realistic stuff too, but we'll pepper in some of these kids' projects with it. All right, cute. So I'm kind of ending uh, just underneath the the mushrooms there, you know, trying to keep them so that they're not overlapping too much, but I want them nice and tall in a few places. So I put a few of them really tall up here. Cute. I'm 
and I might need to go back in. I'm going to actually do that right now while I'm thinking about it and grab a little bit more white, a little bit more of the yellow, and just a touch of that green that we've got going on there. So I've got a really brilliant yellow green. Press it nice and flat. Press nice and hard so you get a really straight edge on here. And do a few more really bright yellow. Green. Just a few. That'll really give it some dimension. Don't overdo it with these though because you don't want it to take over. It'll look like long grass. Yep, looks good. Okay. Just enough. All right, so now I am going to switch to this long, um, long flat brush or a round brush, long round, like a number two round or number four round or something like that would work for this. And we're going to do the stems on our fern. So I'm going to grab a little bit of that dark green that I've got. I need to spray my palette one more time. And a little bit of white. I want it to show up against this dark blue over here in the corner. So I want it to be a little bit lighter than the grasses were. And we'll start out with this. I'm going to hold it upright here and I'm going to run it and try to not to press down too hard. As you go around the corner, you're going to have to turn your brush a little bit. So this might be easier for you to do with a round brush. If, you, if you're not comfortable with kind of turning the brush a little bit as you work, you might try it with a round brush. Let's see if that works better for you. I like using these long flat brushes for long lines like this because they hold a lot of paint and so you don't have to reload it as often. You can do long fat, you know, long lines with them. There we go. I was actually looking at pictures of ferns to kind of get the anatomy right, you know. And they they do the most interesting thing. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but like, you know how they have the little leaves all fanned out. Each one of them, each one of those little leaves is curled up on itself like this. And then it's all curled up in a big, long, big, round curly cue thing. And then as it as it opens, the whole the whole curly cue thing fans out like this. And then each one of the leaves open up. It's really cool. I watched time lapse. Can you tell? I was excited. Sorry. I think I'm the only one that was excited about that. But <laughs> I thought it was cool. <laughs> Mark's uh, ignoring me over there. He's like, whatever. I'm trying to keep up, keep up with Chad. It's moving pretty quickly mm -hmm. over here. Well, good. Yeah. We're not talking about painting or anything, but it was good chat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I grabbed... I still have that dark color on my brush. I grabbed a little bit of the lighter color and I'm gonna dab on, just kind of using the edge of my brush, dab on some leaves, those little leaves that are curled up in the fern here. Just dabbing. And I need to define that outline a little bit better. So I'm gonna go back through with a little bit of the lighter color. Maybe emphasize that outside edge there, that curl. Do that with this too. And then these are kind of pointing upwards, I think. So we'll just do them up, 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 up. Little dabs. And as I go around, I'm just going to turn them so that they're all facing inward. There we go. Just fix that up right there. It's cute. Maybe use some of that darker color. Put it back on. Boom. One down. Do this one over here with some lighter color. 
yellow. See here, I'm, I'm whispering again. Sorry. I was just going to say that. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying not to do that today. But we would like to say thanks to everybody who's joined us today. Yes. If you are new to my channel and uh, have not subscribed yet, we hope you will subscribe. And we do these shows twice a week um, live. So we do all kinds of different levels, beginner, intermediate uh, projects, some more realistic, some more whimsical like this, just kind of all kinds of different things. So you never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Try to keep it fun and lighthearted, though. We... Uh, I firmly believe that everybody should paint. Who wants to paint? Don't feel like that because you somebody told you you didn't have talent for it or you feel like you just don't have any artistic ability. That does not mean that you can't do these projects. These I, I choose specifically projects for people, uh, especially these beginner ones, that... I know are achievable and we've taught hundreds of videos and I've taught for years and years and years, probably over 20 years of teaching now and uh, actually I was pregnant with Jordan so how old did he just turn? He's 24, yeah, so we've been probably teaching for about 24, 25 years now so I can tell you from experience that you, you can paint. You can paint. I can hopefully help you help you get there if you want to. If you put in the practice, it's all it takes. A little bit of practice, a little bit of patience. So is that a made-up fern, or is that? Yeah, I mean, I kind of did it a little more whimsical, but mm -hmm. I mean, that's pretty much how they grow. They they're a little more tight, like they they're you know they're real packed up, so they're real close. Like this, I left a little bit more space so you could. They were a little bit more airy, like they're starting to open up a little bit. So, and are those dragonflies or fairies? Well, they're disguised as dragonflies. I think okay. they're little fairies in disguise. Okay. So, there is there a reference photo for that? <laughs> no, no. Their fairies are hard to photograph. They don't like to be on f camera. They they're pretty shy. I'm going to grab a little bit of burnt sienna and a little bit of the thalo blue, or thalo green, I mean. And um, I made kind of a brownish green. Actually, I do want a little bit of thalo blue with it. Somebody said the fern is called a fiddlehead. Aw. And you can, I guess, some varieties you can eat, they said. Oh, wow. Um, I don't recommend that, you know. Don't right. believe everything you hear from me on the, <laughs> on the internet. Yeah, I wouldn't go out and eat a fern without, you know, exploring that with, you know, an expert. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of this. Actually, I think I'm just going to use burnt sienna. It's working out better. Because they do have like a little bit of brownish in them. You could leave this part out if you don't want them to have this brown. But I thought it kind of added a little bit. They have this kind of fuzzy brown stuff on them. So... All right, cute. Clean my brush out really well here. I'm gonna still use this flat. I'm gonna use it to fill in my mushroom. I'm going to grab the unbleached titanium. If you don't have unbleached titanium, you can just use white with a little bit of burnt umber or, or yellow oxide or something like that just to kind of make it off white. And we'll fill in the underside of this guy. Like I said, this is the hardest part probably. You know, this the grass actually turned out to be pretty easy, so I definitely think that that was no problem. But this is going to take just a little bit of careful filling in right here. <clears throat> I'm going to grab some burnt umber. And I'm going to go right up under here and pull my stem down with the burnt umber so that 
this part is darker so you can see it against that <clears throat> and go ahead and just do the whole stem with that kind of it's mixing with that unbleached titanium make kind of a medium brown color add a little water to your paint if it's starting to get sticky like mine is and then I'm going to grab a little bit of white and right here I'm going to kind of do my little fluted area and just pull up and do a little highlight on that section right there where it's sort of got that break in it. Should you zoom in, hun? Probably. I'm going to zoom in this section here. Was that a question or a rhetorical question? Go ahead. Zoom in, please. Here we go. Thank you. How's that? Perfect. Of course. <laughs> I'll grab some purple too. I'm going to use a little bit of purple. All right. So grabbing that white, dab it off on the canvas a little bit, or the palette, I mean, and just set, flick up into that section there to get that little break. And then I'm going to put some streaks in this wet paint. Kind of highlight the mushroom stem. Okay, that's all we need to do for that guy. I'm gonna do some more shading up here, but I need to let that first coat dry first. So, and then I've got a little bit of burnt umber still in my brush here, so I'm gonna use that for this mushroom stem. All the way down. a little bit more of it. <clears throat> Do a little bit darker right up here. And then grab a little bit of white. We'll do a little skirt on it or whatever that is that where it's kind of got a little section that flares out right there. And we'll use a little bit of white to kind of streak right here. Okay, and then this one is real easy. It just gets kind of a straight straight stem. <coughs> okay. Clean that out, and we'll grab my. Let's see, I'm gonna grab a little bit. Well, I guess I can still use that same brush. And we'll do these purple mushrooms here. So I'm gonna grab a little bit of the doxidine purple and a tiny bit of white. Mix kind of a medium dark purple color. We'll fill in these, oops, don't put your paint hand in the book, paint Angela. Check. At least it didn't really smudge it, it just kind of lifted a little bit of it off. This is a made up mushroom. I don't think there's purple ones, but that's okay. This is our fantasy garden. I think these are fairies in disguise too. They're just kind of, this is like their dresses and they're kind of, their heads are kind of tucked in underneath their chins. So you can't see their heads. That's what I'm saying. Cool. 
Got like a whole backstory going on here. I think so. I mean, if you've ever seen, you know, a little garden like this, it's pretty magical. There was a little area when I was growing up, actually, that... Um, now, we didn't have mushrooms because I lived in the desert. So, I mean, if we did, I didn't, I didn't see a whole lot of them. But um, we did have this area where the little clover would grow in the water. Um, there was like a little pond under some trees. And um, I used to take my Barbie dolls down there and pretend like they were... You know, swimming in the thing and then like the little, you know, little bouquets of flowers and stuff. If I found flowers, I'd make them little bouquets and stuff. Um, I could. But I saw, I saw, I've been seeing pictures of little fairy, uh, fairy house projects on Pinterest and all over Facebook and stuff. So I was kind of inspired. Someone in the group asked I can't remember who, but somebody was asking about doing some fairy houses. So I was like, that's a perfect summer project. We'll do that. Okay, so there's our little purple ones. Aren't those cute? This is just too cute. I'm sorry. Grabbing some darker purple. We'll do the darker purple on the stems here. Just like we did the grass with the long edge of the brush. Cute. And then I'm going to use some white. Mix a little bit of that on the brush. I'm just going to pull in some streaks down from the top. This paint is still wet, so it should kind of work for you. If, if the paint underneath is starting to dry, just do this, just dry it all the way and then do this over the top. But I'm just kind of setting in the little stripies. There you go. Good enough. Let's put a little bit of this color on the stems. Alrighty. I'm going to put a couple of blades of grass over the top just to kind of set those back too. Alright, and I'm going to use my dark um, burnt umber. I think this is dry now. I'm going to use the square end of this brush. I'm going to just pull a door right there. Now you could leave the door out if you don't want it to, you know, be the little fairy gnome garden. Just you can just do this with mushrooms and bugs and stuff, and it'd be adorable without the fairy element. So you can do that. So there's our little door there. I'm going to do this one with the little rounded door. I think this color actually we'll just do all three of them with this color They're trying to blend in. Okay, cute. I keep saying that. I need to stop saying that. Sorry. But they are cute. All right, let's do our shading in here. This should be dry now. We'll do a little bit of um, burnt umber and grab some of that purple. Color, and I'm going to start up here and I'm going to pull down little streaks toward the outside edge and don't go all the way to the edge. Oh, honey. Do that again. <laughs> Mark's on his phone. I'm not on my phone. Okay. I'm on chat. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. So just pull down from the edge and lift 
as you pull down so that you get these streaks. If you get too far down, what you can do is grab some of that unbleached titanium, clean out your brush a little bit. See, and nobody in chat reminded me because they're not paying attention either. <laughs> Nobody's watching the actual painting. Exactly. Just chatting with each other. I see how it is. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of white too and just pull from the outer edge back this way and you can get some streaks. You can even use the edge of your brush if you want like more stripey looking things because they've got this little fluted thing going on or like little striations or whatever and underneath. So fun. All right. I'm going to go use the really dark purple and do a little bit of dark, dark purple right there. Just kind of outline that edge a little bit and pull a little bit onto the stem. And then <clears throat> a little bit of the burnt umber. And I'm going to mix the burnt umber with ultramarine blue because that makes a black. It's a really dark black color. Or you could use black if you have black out. I'm going to outline just a little bit right there and there so that you can kind of see where that mushroom starts and stops. And I'll put a little bit of this color right up underneath right there, just tapping the edge of my brush in to kind of put a shadow underneath a little bit there and there. A little bit right there. Give it a little dimension. Now all of this part with the shadowing and all that, I would totally leave that part out with the kids. I would just do the first, first part that I did and call it good because that can get kind of confusing. So, you know, don't feel like you have to do all the, you know, complicated shading and stuff with when you're doing this with your kids although they can do it I mean they you know I've done I've done if you've got one that's you know pretty competent with painting I would say go ahead and give them that challenge they can probably totally totally do it I, lo I love teaching kids I've t I taught I actually preferred teaching sorry uh, sorry adults but I actually prefer teaching kids. <laughs> the only reason is because they're not as hard as each on, on themselves. They actually really embrace the process. I'm using dark purple here. They embrace the process and they, they don't, they're not so tied up in the results. They just really are all about being in the moment and enjoying the process of, you know, creating and expressing themselves. And I think it's just refreshing because, um, as adults, we're so hard on ourselves, especially when we're starting a new, um, you know, new talent. If you've never painted before and you pick up your brush for the first time, you're not going to, um, you know, don't expect yourself to be able to paint exactly the same way as I'm painting or, you know, somebody else that's been painting for years and years and years. It's just, you know, you're setting yourself up for, don't compare yourself to others that are farther along in their, their art journey is what I'm saying. You know, don't do that to yourself. It just, it's, you know, it's not fair to yourself. You know, be. Don't even try to get it off your hand. It's it's too much. It's, it's all done your arm. <laughs> I know. I know. It's just I'm not even. Okay, I'm just going to put this little guy in over here. And I'm using that dark black color that I mixed up. I added a little bit of purple to it. And I'm going to just pop him in over here as a little side treat. I could see this being done on a really long canvas and just doing all kinds of different mushrooms all down it. Um, I think it would be adorable. This one's got like a little top hat looking like an elf hat kind of shape. And then I'm going to grab some white, blend that in just a little bit on my palette, and then start at the edge and pull up into that wet paint and it'll create these streaks. 
a little bit of white. Dab it right here and just kind of do a little, little rim. Right there. Cute. Okay. Grab a little bit more of that purple dark color and I'm going to pull down from the top down. Do this all, you know, quickly while it's all wet so that you're not worried about any of it uh, lifting or anything like that. I'm going to just use that dark color for my stem. Pop it right down there. A little bit of white highlight on it. Good. Okay. Making pretty good time. Hopefully we'll be able to finish before Ginger starts at 3.30. I think we kind of started a little bit late. So I'm going to do one more coat on my mushrooms. I feel like they're a little bit streaky. And when I do this, I'm going to add some shadowing and highlights to it. So I'm going to put down the wet paint. quickly as I can. Here again you can just do solid color with kids if you want. I'm going to grab some of the quinacridone magenta, a little bit of the purple, and on one side I'm going to streak along the edge and pull it now if you put your darkest color along the edge, then once that paint's out of your brush, you can wipe it off if you have too much paint on your brush, but then it you can just kind of lightly, very lightly blend out from that point and it'll sort of blend into that wet paint and you'll get a little shadow. So I'm gonna reload, get a little bit of heavy paint on my brush. Not too much though. And I'm going to have my light source coming from the middle here so that it's kind of glowing on these sides. So the insides of these are going to be where it glows. This one's going to glow like at the top here. So this is going to be my shadow side on this guy. Oh, and I forgot to put in my red paint, but I'll do that after I get this down. So dark color first, then go next to it and just start blending in and very, very lightly touching the canvas and it'll blend out. And I can take my brush and pick up some of this red and blend it back in if I need to. Oh yeah, and I need to use this red here and go underneath right here. There's a little bit of red peeking out from the bottom of this guy. Okay. What? What you laughing about? Oh, uh, Cinnamon was com commenting that uh, Spider's all pumped up. Oh, is he? He loves it. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I I gave him a shout out. I don't know if he heard me, but he I was telling talking about how he's how he's a TV star. <laughs> how how awesome his mushroom painting was. It was pretty cool. But here's a little Simmons, little boy. Okay, and I'm going to use some of the dark color. So I picked up a little bit. I put down the red and picked up a little bit of that shadow color. And I'm just going to do it on this side of this guy. Not all the way up at the top, though. Just kind of keep it at the bottom. Just kind of lightly. So darkest color where you want it darkest. You know, start there. And then as the paint, the paint will kind of deposit on the canvas and then as you blend out you'll have less paint on your brush as you go out and so you get a little softer blend in theory that's the idea at least uh oh i just got paint on my lampshade from the bottom how did i do how did i manage to get paint all the way over there that's all right he's got splatters of all kinds of stuff we might as well just start decorating it at this point <laughs> I could pull that off so you can I'm see I'm glad it, I'm I way over here. Uh, yeah, you're probably 
unfortunate. This new monitor, I don't hold much hope for it. It's it's about it's about to get splattered. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me look at it here. I think we're pretty good. We got the mushrooms check. Um, oops, I got a little white. Oh wow. Yeah, be sure that you're wiping off your paint with a clean towel, not the painted towel. Let's check another note to self there. Just make sure when you're trying to wipe off your water, you don't have paint on your towel. All right, here we go. I'm just going to take off my chalk lines now, uh, very lightly, dabbing carefully. Don't rub too hard because that paint underneath is still curing so it's not completely dry at this point and it will lift off if you press too hard this way we can kind of see where we're at as far as colors and all that see if we need to add anything or move anything it's looking pretty good I think Alright, I'm going to go ahead and take these off because I don't need those on there. I already know where I want to put them. Cute. I'm going to grab my liner brush here. This is my 2-0 liner brush. 2 ought. Pick up some white. Add in a little bit of water. When you're using a liner brush, you want to add water to your paint to make it a little bit more milky consistency, a little so little softer. It'll just make it easier to roll off your brush. If it's too thick, it just won't. It'll just stick to your brush. The bristles are so long, they're soft, and they just won't deposit the paint like you want them to. So I'm going to hold it at an angle so that I get these long lines kind of horizontal and kind of keep them horizontal with the bottom edge there. I'm just going to dab in different sized little dots on the mushroom. Try not to get them too the same same. And I'm really loading it up pretty thick. More different than I would normally. Normally I would like turn my liner brush to a fine point but I'm really wanting the paint to be kind of thick on the end here so that I get nice little dabs off on it. Form the mushroom spots. And if you wanted them to be round you could use like a little stylus or something like that and get little perfectly round little dots. That would be cute too. Oops, scooters. Somebody's here. <laughs> must be here. Hush, hush. You can't defend anybody from in here. <laughs> it's like you're really going to attack somebody. Fortunately, he doesn't bark very much. He's a schnoodle, so they, they're not super yappy dogs. I wouldn't be able to have him in here if he was. He's usually pretty quiet. Cute. Okay, just got to stop saying that. All right. I can't stand it though. It's so cute. <laughs> can't help it. Oh, everybody's loving it. Oh, good. Yep. Good. Especially the dads are going like <laughs> nuts or out of their minds. <laughs> Stop making me laugh. Oh my God. <laughs> We've had to put some of them on timeout. We're just getting too rowdy in here. <laughs> Like mushrooms, <laughs> shouting out their favorite kinds. And They're all that. jumping out, doing doing belly bumps and <laughs> stuff. It's just getting crazy. And doing a mosh pit and chat. <laughs> oh gosh, that's awesome. <laughs> Don't make.
make me laugh. I can't be <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I got the giggles now. <laughs> I, to say, I haven't said anything. <laughs> I know. I got the giggles now. Oh, gosh. Just picturing it. <laughs> it's bare belly dads. Okay, I'm going to stop. So what are we doing for Father's Day for you, honey? We didn't really, I don't think we're going to do anything. Huh? We're just going to hang out and play video games, watch some Harry Potter. Fantastic Beasts. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, things have just been so crazy busy. You don't even have time to think about what's going on. I know. You know I realized, you know, that my driver's license expired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, oh, yeah. This morning. I forgot about that. <laughs> hmm. so, yeah. So it's just... I haven't had time to think about his Father's Day. I know. I know. All right, well, I've got this white on my brush here. I'm going to outline my door just very carefully. You could use a pen for this if you, you know, have a little paint pen. That would be perfect. And if I was doing this with my kids' class, I keep saying that, but if you're doing this with kids, I would grab yourself some acrylic paint pens. Like they have these uh, Molotow or... Um, you could use the, the Faber-Castell pit pens. They have those. Um, the, the, they're not as opaque, though, so you'll probably want an acrylic pen for the white parts. But if you're doing black outlining, you could use a pit pen like this. And they're permanent ink. Sharpie would work, too, but Sharpie will fade after time. So, um, if, you know, if you want longevity with it, I would use a, um, you know, good artist acrylic pen of some sort. And... They're a good investment if you take good care of them. They'll last for several paintings. And it makes it this kind of thing very, very easy to do. Okay. So what does that mean for the future of Stickman? What do you mean? Well, you said that Sharpie's going to fade. Oh, well, that's no, true. I'm, I'm that's sad true. And I thought concerned. of that. Yeah. He, we just got to keep him out of the sun. He should be okay. All right. We'll put him behind a special glass like they have the Mona Lisa. Right. We'll I that. think I'm putting my doorknobs on the wrong side now that I think about it. Our doorknobs on the right. No. That's okay. They're fairies. They... It, it, no, it, it's, it's either way. It's either way? Yeah. Okay. You know, like our back door's on the left, front door's on the right. Okay. All right. <laughs> Party in the front back business in the front <laughs> that's right <laughs> put a little bit of streaks in here uh, yep that's true this is the mullet house <laughs> <laughs> let's put a little round window right here we'll put a little square one up here up high You could get as creative as you want with these. I think that you could add clotheslines and little hammocks and little chairs and tables and all kinds of fun stuff. I could see you going to town, getting real creative with this. I'm going to grab a little bit of blue and just make myself a light blue, a little bit of blue and white. So somebody asked the pens that you were using. Do they have a an odor to them? No, they're not a they're not an oil pen. They're an acrylic pen. So it's just basically acrylic paints inside of a pen form. So they're kind of a new ish thing. Used to be you had to buy those paint pens to get a you know to get anything that would cover. But now they're making these paint pens in acrylics with acrylic you know paint in them, and they're wonderful. Uh, I've got a girlfriend that runs a paint shop in town, and she um, she uses them to finish off her painting. So she'll have the kids like paint in something like this, and then she'll come through with the black pen and just outline everything and make it real clean and crisp looking. And it's really really cool. Um, looks kind of cartoonish. Um, so. 
Okay, so let's do a little bit of burnt umber, or no, let's use white. I think. Yeah, burnt umber, sorry. No, white, because I've got my outline in white. I'm gonna do this little crosses in here. Give this guy a little, still wet, but it should, yeah, there we go. Just a little detail for them. And then I'm going to use some, this should be dry now. I'm going to use some of my shadow color that was there and wet it down so it's real watery, kind of thin. And I'm just going to lightly brush over the spots on that side. And that'll just set those back, make them look like they're part of that shadowed edge. This is a small detail, but it'll really be effective to... Even though this is whimsical, we can still kind of add some realistic elements to it. Make it a little bit more like like. Okay, you can zoom out a little bit now, huh? For me, if you would. I'm going to switch to a different brush now. I'm going to get a number two round. This is also the Princeton brushes. And I'm going to touch up this fern where I put my hand in it. It's kind of bugging me. I'm grab a little bit of white, a little bit of yellow, and this green. And I'm just going to go through here and add back in those leaves. And I'm also going to put a few over the top of the house there, so it kind of sets that back, makes it look like it's part of the background. Oops, paint off the side again. I'm going to do that on here too. This one's a little bit dark. Acrylics will dry dark. So a lot of times I'll do my, you know, do my painting and, you know, do it as the colors that I think it's going to need. But then sometimes you just need to, once it's dry, you can tell if you need to go back in and add another layer of your highlights. And usually I'll do that at the very end of a painting. Not the wear at the very end, but we're getting there. So I'm going to put some of these over the top of this fern, or this uh, mushroom to push it back. See that? <clears throat> Let's do our little snail. I think I'm going to do him orange. I'm going to grab that orange. Pyro orange, and a little bit of burnt sienna, just to kind of tone it down a little bit so it's not so circus color. That's a ginger cook reference. We'll draw in our, we need a little white in that too because it's transparent pyro, so it's not going to cover. There we go. It's kind of a well, it's a slug shape at first, so it's... You're definitely going to need a couple coats because that uh, grass is, you know, sticking out. So I'm going to grab the cadmium yellow, medium, a little bit more white. It's mixing with that orange. And I'm going to do the shell right here in that color. And come all the way up to where that body is and kind of angle down here. I'm grab a little bit more white and I'll just try to see if I can get that spiral in. No, I'm not gonna have to I'm gonna have to let it dry and come back in. in. I'm 
clean that out well. Would you mind, honey, wa um, rinsing out my, my water is getting gray brown color. Just give me a little bit of fresh water, please. Thank you so much. Okay, well, I've got this little brush here. I'm gonna use a little bit of white on the very tip. You could use, you could have used your liner brush too. And I'm gonna use this to brighten up the centers of my dragonflies. And I'm gonna just do a little spot in circle. If you get it too bright, you can just kind of tap it off with your finger, and rub it out a little bit to blend it. But you keep it just just the very tip of it above. <clears throat> Hold it really. F oh my gosh, I'm off camera again. My gosh, I'm sorry. Let me zoom out farther for you. There we go. All right. Hold your brush right up up over the middle, and then just kind of do a circle. So. Hold it really f upright, and I'm going to put my hand in that green again if I don't, I'm not careful. Sit upright. I want this one to be a little bigger. Some of these I'm going to kind of really go out, go out of, out of bounds with, make them a lot bigger. So. And I have watered down white here. You could use a little bit of blue in it if you, for the outside part, if you're worried about it getting too big. But by the time I get out there, there's very little paint on my brush left, so it's just kind of doing a little soft dry brushing. Thank you, hon. I was talking about you. No, it was no, it wasn't. I did go off camera though again. I thought it was all the way zoomed out. It wasn't. All right, I'm just adding little spirals. If you if you're having trouble and you you're touching on your paint, you can also kind of prop up a fist underneath your forearm, and that'll help hold your arm up out of the way of your paint. There we go. I got red down here. Did it on both of these. I must have been going fast, not paying attention. <clears throat> okay. It's coming along almost. So 35. Sorry, Ginger. We're already. I think she's uh, delayed a little bit. She's delayed. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Yeah, we did say ish, right? <laughs> we said yes, yes, ish. 30 ish. <laughs> Okay, let me see. I'm trying to remember how the spiral goes. I think it comes... But how much longer do you think, though? This way. Um, 15 minutes, maybe? I don't know. Not too much longer. I just have to do the fireflies, or the, the dandel or dragonflies, really. That's about all that's left. So, not even that long. I think maybe 10 minutes. And a little a couple of little flowers. Let's use this yellow while I've got it on my brush and do a couple daisies up here. I'm just gonna pull from the outside in. Do some daisies. A little buttercups or something. Yeah. <laughs> 
<clears throat> Actually, let's do one more over here, too. And then grab a little bit of that orange in the center, and I'm just going to dab in some orange in the centers here. And I kind of picked ones that look like they had kind of a stem going to them so that I don't have to go back in and draw stems in. But if you miss that or it doesn't look like it's connected to anything, you can go back in and dab in a stem to these also. <coughs> I'm losing my voice. Sorry. Man, that was almost perfect timing. Why? That throw clear and the one that was delayed I'm listening to were almost <laughs> right on. <laughs> burnt sienna just doing a second coat on our little little guy here let me see if I can twist this to a fine enough point to get a little antennas out here I might have to use my aren't those his eyes that are oh you might the top be there? yeah I think so actually so now he can see now he can see where he's going we could give him a little eye, a little eye. Oh, yeah, I guess those are his eyes, I was going to say. Yeah, that's right. That's getting light. <laughs> I'm going to grab some white and dab just a little bit of white in with these flowers, too, just to kind of give the centers a little bit more detail. All right. <coughs> Okay, now let's uh, grab some purple. We'll put in our little dragonflies that could be fairies in disguise, who knows. I did realize after I painted this example painting that dragonflies don't actually have little antennas, so I think that they're just sticking their arms out mm -hmm. straight, looking like they, looking like, you know, like their antennas, but those are actually the fairy arms. And they just got their legs together. They're hiding. Okay, enough of the backstory. Yeah, you know what to justify. <laughs> I'm just saying. Cool stuff. I think that I'm going to put them in there because they're cute with the antenna. I don't care that they don't have them in real life. I'll or, post a picture. I do what I want to do. This that's right. Me. That's right. But <laughs> I'll post a picture of the dragonfly that I took last year in your Facebook group. Oh, do you did? Or well, you will? I will. Okay. Looks like he's smiling. Yeah, he does. That's true. Okay, so a little dot for the head. A little longer dash for the body, and then a long, thin tail. That's your dragonfly body. We'll do one coming up this way. Dab for the head. Longer dash for the body. And tail. Oh, I still have to do the... I just remembered I still have to do the ladybugs, too. I'm going to do that while I'm thinking about it, or I'll forget. <clears throat> red put one right here just kind of little oval shape my red skin sticky it's starting to dry I'm gonna spray my canvas Thanks. if you keep them moist while they're while you're working you can spray, but if you if you let them dry too much, then when you spray, it'll just kind of set on top. It won't absorb down in. So what I can I do sometimes if my paints uh, if I've got a lot of paint on my canvas or on my palette and I don't want them to go to waste, I use these foam plates and I'll put another plate on top to protect it um, and then stick it in a little uh, gallon size plastic baggie. It's a perfect size for it. And um, I can even stick a little wet paper towel in there, like a damp paper towel. Spray it real good, damp paper towel, set it in the bag, and give it a couple hours, and your paints will re-moisten. Like, the moisture seeps back into the paints. Now, if they have a crusty top, you might have to peel that off, but the paints underneath will be um, damp still and good to go. So, um, just a little tip. Because the acrylics are expensive. You don't want to go to waste. 
they, you don't want them to. Okay. And for the wings, I am using a little bit of quinacridone magenta and white. So I'm gonna grab my white, mostly white, just a teeny, 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 tiny bit of white. It's all you're gonna need. That quinacridone is super highly concentrated. So, and I really might need to switch to a smaller brush, but I don't know, I'll see. I'm gonna wet down my bright paints really well and twist it to a point. So I've got a liner brush here twist it to a point and I'm going to set it down right by the body. The wings are going to come out of the body part right here, not the tail. And I'm going to do these little loopy loop de loos for the, the wings. And then I'm just going to do some more and kind of fill it in with these little loop de loos like that. All right, then do the same thing on the other side. Loop de loo. You could fill them in if you wanted to. If this stresses you out, just fill them in. Oh, I picked up a little bit of that purple that I don't mind. Looks good. Keep it light. Try not to press down too hard with it. You might need to, like I said, you can use a liner brush if this brush is too big for you. If you can't get a small line on it, just use a bigger, or use a thinner brush. <coughs> and also I find that kind of turning my canvas sometimes helps. So since these ones are kind of this direction, I want to be able to pull from the left to right. It's the direction that you write with is usually easiest for you to paint in that direction too. So <coughs> oftentimes I'll be turning my canvas around as I paint. That's why I don't like to use an easel if I can help it. And the smaller canvases really lend themselves well to painting on a flat surface. Or I usually hold it in my hand, actually, you know, when I'm painting and kind of turn it as I need it, need to. This one is going to have his wings just kind of flopping in like this and this. Cute. Very fairy-ish. I'm going to grab a little bit of white. Just straight white, try to get some clean. I don't know, I have to put out some new clean white hair. So will there be any fairy man buns? <laughs> I don't think so. They're not Sorry. that hip? No, they're not. Okay. They're not. Boho? Could be. I don't know. This is very boho. Anyways, I'm going to add a little bit of white to my purple and I'm going to just dab in a little bit of highlights on my dragonflies' bodies. Just dab, 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 dab. Maybe a little bit more of that dark purple. I kind of got a little carried away on that one. I said I was going to give him more antenna, but I might not. Maybe I should. But if you wanted to, I mean, they do have like little legs. Um, so you could put, like on this one, you could give them little legs. But I'm not going to. I don't want to get into that much detail. But people can take the painting to whatever level they want to. Exactly. They don't have to follow exactly, exactly what you're doing. Right. In fact, I'm going to put a little butterfly right here. I'm going to do butterfly. So butterfly body is very similar to the dragonfly body. The head's a little smaller. This part of the body is a little bit uh, bigger and the tail is shorter. So I'm going to do a little yellow butterfly up there. I'll grab my cadmium yellow. We'll do top part kind of rounded just like we did the other. But then this part I'm going to kind of make a point at like a leaf shape almost. Cute. Okay, make sure you leave a white. time for a stick man. Chad is already getting a little restless. About stick man? They want mm -hmm. stick man? So. Okay. All right, I'll, I'll do stick man. I feel like I want this guy to have more detail in his shell, so I'm going to go some burnt umber 
and give him a little more of a spiral on his shell. There we go. I'm going to mix more of that black with my ultramarine blue in burnt umber color. Add a little bit of purple to it too, that'll make it even darker. We'll use that for our little ladybug head and spots. There's two, one, two, three. Two low, one high, and then there's a little head, and you can give them a couple of little antenna if you want, a little a few little legs, or six little legs. I really feel like I want black for this, but I'm not going to put out new paint. You can use black. Probably recommend it. There we go. We're getting there. Their little antenna are actually pretty small and lady bugs, but I'm kind of exaggerating them. And my you can't even see them. They really needed a second coat of red, too. I'm going to do that over the spot, sorry. And then a little bit of white. I'm going to switch to my liner brush. It's going to be easier for these. Fighting all these little details with the big brush. A little bit of white. Dab a little bit of detail on the ladybug spots. A little bit of white by the face. Like a little eye or something. some of that really bright white for my dragonfly wings. One more layer of loops, so really brighten them up a little bit. Make them a little bit more visible against that blue. Again, I'm off camera, sorry. You're fired. Whose job is it to make sure you're on camera? I don't know. You're fired, I think, though. That's all I'm saying. Okay. <laughs> He's like, thank the Lord. I think you're doing it on purpose. It's all right. Like... <laughs> Saturday's just opened up. <laughs> Take it back. You're not fired. I can, I can take off the, mm -hmm. the image now, can I? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That'll help. Grab a little bit of that purple. The butterfly does have antenna, so I can go to town on this one. Give it a little bit of a softer, 
softer purple. Well, all right, let's grab some of this white here, bright white. I'm going to put some little dots, dots on the bottom of this little guy here. Just on the bottom edge of that. Okay. Am I forgetting anything? Well, I did do some little, um, if you want to, I did some little like star, um, star burst on a few of these. So you can do that with the liner brush if you want to. Like they were kind of sparkling next to bright on a couple of these. Just doing a little crisscross, straight line, straight line again, and then X through the middle of those. Cute. Little fairy sparkle. Glitter. Glitter would be really cute if you had glitter paint or something like that. Add a few little dabs of glitter paint around on here. I'm going to end it by splattering it with a little bit of purple and a little bit of my green and a little bit of white. Makes kind of a soft, I want it kind of dark-ish though. I want to show up against the other colors. So kind of a medium purple color. Make sure that you add enough water so that it's like a milk consistency. Otherwise, it'll just stick to your brush. It won't splatter for you. You don't want it dripping off your fan brush or your toothbrush or whatever you're using to... The toothbrush works really well for this. Stiff one. Uh, stiff bristle toothbrush. Dab it off on your paper towel so you get off the extra little bits and then tap with your finger. Now protect anything you don't want splattered because this will get everywhere. Trust me. I think that's not dark enough, so I'm going to grab a little bit. Hide your children. Hide your... Hide your... <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> 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 not going to say the rest of that, though. <laughs> Hide your husband's, I think it was. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. I got, I got ultramarine blue here this time. Do a little bit of those. This just adds a little finishing detail. You can leave this part out if you don't like the splatters. I just think it kind of unifies it and sort of gives it that sort of hazy, magical quality too. So and just if you get in some on, so they could see the splatters. Okay. There, that's right. pretty good detail. Yeah, very good. You can see the little ladybug detail too there. Mm -hmm. Okay, back out. Thank you. All right, and then a little to finish it off, I'm going to do a little bit of white splatters and we'll be done. Okay. Let Ginger know. Yep, let Ginger know. We are done. So, those who are watching with me live, if you want to uh, head on over after this, to Ginger Cook Live. We'll have the link uh, to her channel down in the description and also in my iCards. She's doing a beautiful uh, fountain painting. It's really gorgeous for her summer, love summer art. And then uh, after that, you can check out the other hashtag love summer art uh, projects from the other. There's a bunch of uh, artists doing this collaboration on YouTube today. So all kinds of from crafting to painting to all kinds of different ones. So there we go. Lots of little, little splatters. Hope you've enjoyed this. This has been super fun for me getting to do something whimsical and lighthearted. Um, well, about, I don't know, less than two hours. So not too bad. So uh, thanks for joining me today. If you uh, 
want any information about becoming a Patreon member, getting the traceable for this, uh, all that is down in the description as well, uh, as well as the links to the materials and all my social media. You can share it with me on Facebook. Um, and we will see you next time, Tuesday night. Thanks. Bye. <laughs>